Hey guys and girls, welcome once again to Gregston Reviews. Today we should be looking at NVIDIA's newest release, the Pascal uh, GTX 1080, and uh, my review is a little earlier than expected, although this isn't really a, a review, more of a, a benchmark comparison. But by the by, it's uh, a little earlier th than expected because uh, the EVGA FTW that I had pre-ordered wasn't due until at least the 17th at Overclockers, so uh, my impatience has kicked in once again. I see they had the uh, Gigabyte G1 Gaming Edition in, which uh, I wanted a custom called card this time, and uh, basically this is a custom called card. It's only got the one eight pin connector, but I'm not fussed about that. I'm not uh, gonna be chasing world record overclocks and benchmarks, so uh, this will be a, a nice simple review. So yeah, uh, just chucked over the order, and uh, Overclocker sent it out to me yesterday. So. Uh, Right result, and uh, if we look behind me, here we go. As you can see, it's the uh, three fan custom cool card. It's a uh, nice and solid feel. Uh, lots of LEDs apparently, I've not actually put it in the system yet. So uh, we'll have a look at that soon. But as you can see, it's uh, got the uh, HDMI connection, three DPI, uh, sorry, uh, DP connectors and the dual link DVI connector. It's SLI ready, like I said earlier, one eight pin connected just over there. Uh, overall, real solid feel. Fans feel nice and uh, solid as well. Can't, can't complain about that. Comes with a back plate as well, my sticky fingers on. And uh, you'll have to excuse the mess I'm in, I'm still in my works t-shirt. I've literally rushed in from work and uh, unboxed that which you'll see the unboxing video in a sec and uh, I shall throw it in my computer as quick as possible I've already done my uh, Titan X tests at stock and overclock so this gigabyte card will be going up against the uh, EVGA Superclock Titan X so can it compete? Right just a quick show there let's get down to some benchmarks and I'll see you back up again soon This is probably the quickest unboxing video you'll ever see. Uh, pretty much there's a bugger all in it. <laughs> so uh, let's open that up, let's have a look. Here's the box with the G1 Gaming in. Gigabyte, GeForce, some Harry Bow from Overclockers. Thank you very much. Right, let's get in the real box, see what's in there. There's the box of the the goodies and the graphics card. That's the bit we care about. We don't care about the others, let's be fair. Nobody cares. But it wouldn't be a box and unboxing video if I didn't show you what else is there. So uh, let's have a look in the other box and see what's what. Oh, some basic instructions. <laughs> this <laughs> CD. <laughs> right, that's that. On to the games. The first game I tested was Tom Clancy's The Division. It's uh, my favourite game at the moment, so it had been rude to ignore it. Uh, everything's tested at 1440p. I've set uh, to Ultra everything on and uh, give it a good hammering, see what both cards can do and how they perform. Both cards are at their stock clocks, uh, which means no overclocking at all. Uh, basically, I've just put MSI afterburner on set a one-to-one -one fan profile and I've done this for every game by the way uh, basically what that means is if uh, the temperature is 40 degrees centigrade the fans will be at 40% 50 degrees centigrade 50% 80 degrees centigrade 80% so uh, that's a one-to-one -one fan profile it's uh, inaudible on the uh, 1080 but the uh, Titan X is quite loud I've got to be honest that was uh, rather loud the Titan X is doing okay, it's holding its own and so it bloody well should do at uh, 830 40 pound whatever it cost me at the time. But the 1080 at £609 is giving it a bit of a bit of a kicking, to be fair. It's a good 10, 12 frames per second faster in places, which doesn't sound a lot, but when you're at this 1440p res, you need them extra frames. So uh, yeah, this is the division. Uh, I've run the in-game benchmarks on all the tests, by the way, just because they're easily repeatable and uh, it makes for some solid info. So Titan X scored 60 frames per second almost 
and the 1080 was 71.4. Jumping into overclocked mode, we've got the uh, Titan X at 1420MHz, it's down clocking a little bit as you can see, and we've got the 1080 G1 at uh, 2050 megahertz it is and as you can see that's down clocking a little bit but uh, on, on GPUZ uh, the Titan X was reading uh, 1420 once I'd set the clocks and the uh, 1080 was reading 2050 that still seems incredible saying that over 2 gigahertz clocks but uh, yeah a little bit down clocking here and there which uh, happens on cards it's uh, perfectly normal especially the uh, GPU boost 2.0 and 3.0 that we see here but uh, as you can see, uh, the Titan X has clawed back a little bit here. It's it's pulled it back quite a bit. The uh, I assume it's the memory clocks here that are making the difference. I've got a uh, plus 250 on the uh, 1080 and plus 500 on the Titan X. I could have potentially gone more on both, but uh, I kept it all conservative. And uh, you can see here they both holding their own. The uh, Titan X is doing well, and the uh, 1080 is roughly 10% faster so uh, yeah not too shabby from either there and uh, a lot closer than uh, stock versus stock temperatures are getting a little bit wild on the Titan X as you can see 82 degrees centigrade there but uh, 66 being the, the max I'd seen and that's actually the max I'd seen at, on uh, the 1080 full stop, I hadn't seen it go any higher than that in all of my testing and it is a very very hot day, my ambience are at 20, 24 degrees centigrade so take that into account as well so 64.5 on the Titan X and 72.1 on the 1080 moving on it's time for Lara Croft to make a return in Rise of the Tomb Raider this was a uh, a bit of a wait coming for this one but uh, again everything set to ultra with uh, two times SSAA and uh, 1440p again as you see the uh, clocks are a little uh, bouncy about for both cards this is the stock clocks 1320 should be the stock on the uh, Titan X and uh, 1950 is the stock on the uh, 1080 bit of bouncing but that, that like I said earlier it does happen it's uh, nothing to worry about never bothered me in the past never will do again it might uh, be worth a discussion from some people I'm sure but we don't really care it plays the games as you can see breezing through it we're getting uh, 43 44 on the uh, Titan X and we're getting 53 on the uh, 1080 so a bit of a jump there and it's actually pushing it into the realms of being very playable with everything set to max including two times SSAA at 1440p uh, while this is running uh, I'm still running on the 3930k at 4.4 whilst I'm waiting for the uh, new motherboard to come for the 6850k but uh, no bottleneck whatsoever on the CPU but yeah just look forward to an upgrade there but as you can see these are the uh, the clocks and there's the results it's an average of uh, 50 frames per second on the Titan X which is, isn't too shabby and for the 1080 it's almost 60 frames per second, 59.2 so no messing about, straight into uh, plus 100 on the uh, 1080 and plus 90 on the Titan X so that's 1420 on the Titan X and 2050 on the 1080 Again, clocks are not showing what they are. I assume that's probably because my uh, Titan X is getting a bit hot as well and it's uh, doing a little bit of throttling going on there. But as you can see, uh, frames are very acceptable on both. Bit of a tough, tough ass this game really with the uh, two times SSAA on. But uh, it's a beautiful game very well done and uh, deserves to have some of the settings set high 1440p again I don't know uh, how many times I'm going to say that but 1440p again there you go one more as you can see uh, overclocking isn't making a, a massive difference to the 1080 to be fair but I put that down to the, to the uh, clock spins are high in the first place uh, 
when you keep pushing and pushing and pushing a bit more the uh, returns become less and less so uh, if you used to see the the 1080 released at uh, the same clocks as the Titan X you'd see massive gains but the Titan X does uh, slightly better with the overclock and uh, as you can see it's not that far behind sort of five six frames per second which is averaging uh, sort of 10 10 percent so uh, not too shabby just quickly for the record uh, all my games are run on DX11 just purely because you can see all the uh, afterburner results and see what's going on whereas uh, whilst running with DX12 I can't see none of that so just to give you a heads up there it's nothing to do with anything else other than showing the temperatures the clocks and everything else right little bit of teaser testing there nothing too much I've got loads of other benches done but I want to get this up and done go back up for some FaceTime and a little bit of a chat about it in a quick conclusion but if you're really interested uh, my full review will be coming within the next couple of weeks so stay tuned okay that's the uh, benchmarks done the unboxing done and I should give a quick conclusion on my uh, benching and mini review we'll call this one so uh, yeah is is the card worth it well it's 10 percent faster than uh, my overclocked Titan X my max stable overclocked Titan X that is so it's stock for the 1080 it's 10 percent faster than that it's 20 percent faster card for card so you've got the uh, Superclock EVGA Titan X against the G1 Gaming from Gigabyte so 20% faster there and all at 1440p don't forget and those extra frames are, are quite a bonus at times and, and let's be fair if you want all the pretties they're quite well needed at times it came in at £609 for me which is quite a lot of money uh, if you've already got a 980 Ti Titan X I say you're going to be hard pushed to justify the outlay for that and I could understand if you sat and waited because let's be fair the 1080 Ti will be coming none of us are that daft we know it'll be coming and uh, I imagine it'll be a beast but if you're on a let's say a 980 or a 390 perhaps from AMD you might want those extra frames you might have gone from a 1080p monitor to a 1440p or even a 4k monitor and you want the extra frames this is where uh, you should be looking to buy you can get the cars cheaper there's no need for them to be that expensive but the one thing that stood out for me with the g1 gaming was the acoustics and uh, the base clocks basically it's uh, as you see well over 1900 megahertz boosting it flies through all the games at 1440p uh, the ones i've tested which are demanding still especially uh, the division and rise of the tomb raider it's it's well within the realms of realms of playability and that's with everything maxed out i put all the settings are ultra as, as you know and uh, we've let them fly and as you can see what the performance is it's down to you whether you spend the money or not I'm not going to tell you to go and do it it's your choice but for older cards I'd say it could be a worthwhile purchase if you can uh, justify spending that much money but maybe again uh, Titan X 980 Ti owners should possibly hold off something faster will be coming but that's the old adage there's always something f faster coming we, we had that attitude we'd never buy anything because there's always something faster coming but yeah in a quick summary uh, great card fantastic uh, card from Gigabyte my mini review is ended now and uh, I should be back with a full review soon enough and uh, I'll give my full uh, description on the card thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon bye for now